Today we're going over navigation and target acquisition in the Harrier. We have a little example at the end to show how we can use waypoints and target points to blow stuff up. Start with, we'll uh, go very simply. Uh, when you start, you'll start with a waypoint called waypoint zero. That is always your start point. So you can see here we're 1.1 miles away from waypoint zero. As well as that, by default, we're given a waypoint one. That's normally a few miles to the north. In this case, it's 20 miles. What we'll do is we'll change the location of waypoint one. Or was it, uh, yeah, waypoint one. So we're just going to mess this up a little bit. Um, to bring your move map onto the uh, screen. I'm going to go it sets the select left once. If it's say on, uh, let's give you a different image. Say it's on the config page. You go left and it will automatically go onto the moving map. So we're going to move the waypoint, so I'm going to go data. I'm going to check the top left, it sees this map here. So what I'm going to do, is I'm going to go sensor select up, and it says INS. We'll also lower the con or gain at this point. It's a bit easier to read. And we can now use the TDC controls, basically what controls the T-Pod and the T, uh, TDD TDC itself to move the waypoint, uh, like an estimate. So move it, say on this island here. We'll use scale, zoom it in, just there, looks nice. Next we'll add another waypoint, a new waypoint. So we'll click data twice to bring waypoint up, back onto the data page. And we'll type in, uh, you can either type in number two for waypoint two, or what I do is I type in a bid number like 50 and then enter, and it will give you the next uh, like a fresh waypoint in the sequence. So star means new and the new waypoint number is two. So new waypoint number two. Position. And then we'll start with north. And we'll put a waypoint in this village just here. And we'll be working off this format. Two digits. It's gonna be two, six, five, three, four, four, enter easting. Be five five two six two seven. Enter. That looks about right. Elevation. It's going to be about fifty feet, let's say. Enter. So that's waypoint one moved and waypoint two made. How can we, how do we know this is correct? We can go data, and then cycle to waypoint two, waypoint one, and then waypoint zero as well. So. How do we make a line from our point to waypoint one and waypoint two? Put quite simply, go off onto the normal navigation, yeah, move a map with the green text, go map, and select overlay, and then you'll get a line. As well as that, you can click SEQ for sequencing, you'll get numbers on the waypoints as well. Going off map now, we're going to put in a target point through data link, I should add. So, we're going to select the markers. We're going to select the rough area, let's say. So, it's a, um, we just, we glanced at it on the F10. Um, and say fog of war is on, and now we can't see them. So, we're going to put hashtag TP for target point, and then number one, because it's going to be our first target point. So, how do we get this up? Or data link to us from the ground. If you look on your kneeboard on the second page, you will see your target list, MGRS, uh, or MGRS will give you the elevation and the time in which it was given to you. And you do this by right shift, right alt, and eight on the keyboard, like so. When to do it, it will give you the uh, information. Will, uh, the information is also present, and we'll use the right hand display now, on your cast page on the recall. You'll see the data is exactly the same as um, the kneeboard. How do we know it's in the uh, in the aircraft? Well, you might notice um, it's not really on the display yet. We have waypoint zero, one, and two. As you see. So to get waypoint uh, or target point one, you will push and hold waypoint increment, which is this button. Very important in the Harrier. You will click target point, select target point 1 on the UFC, 
then enter. We'll now go data. We'll zoom in a little bit and you'll see it's on the road where it should be. I'm going to go back to waypoint now. So push and hold. So at waypoint, I'm going to go to waypoint one. Enter. So it goes back to waypoint one. And I'll get airborne and we'll go over some other stuff. Right, we're airborne and uh, heading to waypoint one. I'll now press the waypoint increment button that we used earlier to select a uh, waypoint. We're just going to push it. You see, we have selected waypoint two on the hood. Now, you might see it's not uh, present on the hood as a circle. It's uh, where we're going. Uh, make sure you're in nav mode. That's the first step. Uh, and then make sure you're on the right heading. So you can see here, we're not on the right heading. So we're going to turn to the left, follow this solid line. There it is. That is waypoint two. Nice and easy. So we're approaching our target point. Target point one. So we're going to arm the weapons. Air to ground mode. We don't have to go onto the stores page. The EFIS automatically, or the moving map, automatically turns into a uh, stores page. Now go to see on the top. So we have our IR Mavs, APK, and our JDAMs. We're going to select JDAMs. I'm going to arm them. I'm not going to touch the uh, targets just yet. The terms for the targets. I'm going to push and hold waypoint increment so we can select our target point one and press enter. You can see T1 is now present and we're going to designate it with our DMT. We're not going to use a T-pod today, so select or uh, designate. Box designate button. And now you can now see the uh, diamond sideways square has appeared. And I'll go sensor select down. And you can see we have slaved our TV in the nose to that waypoint. You can see we're off a little bit. This is to be expected. We're uh, for simulation stake or uh, what's it called? Um, for simulation purposes, training purposes, we're just uh, estimating as if it was like a JTAG or on the uh, F10 map. I can hog it. So we've got a uh, we've marked our uh, put our pippa over the target. We're now we're going to override or rewrite target point one. I click T O O. It will automatically think you want to make a new one. We're not. We're just going to say target point one. Enter. That will then rewrite it. To check this, we can go nose will steer button to undesignate. You can see our DMT is now slave to our pippa or velocity vector. We can now redesignate it, and you can see it is rarely left it. We'll select another target. Press T O O and enter. That's made a second target point. We do the same for the last two. T O O three. Oop, that, a little bit off. T O O three. Clear that. And T O O four. Right, now we can start using JLAMs. So, you can click weapon, targets, and we're going to do a ripple drop today. And it's, remember, we've made four targets and four APCs. So, one, two, three, and four. Exit. We go turn, angle, and 50 degrees is, is quite nice for the JLAMs to follow. You can now see on the moving map we have our four line. So I'll reset our view and make sure the solid dot is in the circle. We're on course. And we're just waiting for the outer circle or the circle would become bold and start counting down anti clockwise. Gain a little bit of altitude, we're a little bit low. There you go, it's beginning to unravel. Still out of range. Now in range, you can see we got our percentage of drop. So I'm going to throttle down a little bit so we have enough time. And that is a ripple four. So we'll break off. Throw out a few countermeasures. Make sure our AFC is on. Turn on altitude hold. And you see 
That is four shacks. Nice and easy.